Thanks a lot. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My question is, can humans create a natural forest, or is it an oxymoron? Um, an oxymoron is a contradiction in terms, like deafening silence or living dead. It means the, the uh, and is it therefore possible for humans to create what nature creates? Um, all of you will, it's not going forward, how do I, is it on? Thank you. Uh, this is a natural forest, why call it a native or indigenous forest in western Kenya, it's called Kakamega Forest. And it looks like a virgin forest, but actually if you go closer it's not a virgin forest, it's, it is a natural forest but it has an abundance of invasive species. And um, <clears throat> it's, but what it does have is very old trees and very large canopy trees. In complete contrast, we have a plantation of eucalyptus, um, and as you can see, they're very low biodiversity. So, um, this picture is interesting because we went up there. I collect rare species of rare species of plants, and uh, we went up to Western Kenya, and this was a this is a forest reserve. We went up six weeks before I took this photograph and we found a tree uh, uh, that had fruit on it and we said we'll go back in two months. Two months later we went back. What a, was a hundred percent canopy forest had been totally destroyed, almost totally destroyed and that, that was left. But what's interesting is the Kenya Forest Service uh, defines a forest as 15 percent forest cover and this still is more or less 15 percent but it has been totally destroyed. This is, the, this is the locality where our forest has begun. As you can see, it's mostly a monoculture of tea with a lot of eucalyptus and other uh, exotic species. For those of you who don't know about tea growing, for every four acres of tea, you have to have one acre of eucalyptus in order to dry the tea. Um, this is the exact site where we've created a forest. We, have, we started absolutely from scratch. This is a... Cons this is a convention center about 30 kilometers north of Nairobi at 2,000 meters and this is a film photograph um, which I took in 2000 and you can see 100% uh, or nearly 100% uh, exotic species but if you look very carefully if you look at the if you look at the uh, if you look at this tree here that's an indigenous tree and you look at the next photograph um, if you just keep your eyes on that tree the next one this is the same forest 15 years later, actually 17 years later. Um, so first of all, why did we do it? The answer is in, in the four or five decades that I've been working in Kenya, all I've seen is destruction of forest and a huge decrease in the amount of wildlife. Um, and secondly, we decided to create a forest in order to show people that actually you can make, you, you can have a source of income from a native forest. For example, timbers from things like meru oaks. We have shade coffee. It's very high altitude, but very high quality coffee. Um, we just started a honey project. We have indigenous vegetables. Um, but above all, we, I'm interested in plant conservation, indigenous plant conservation, because I'm absolutely sure that every single species has a value to man. The problem is we don't know what the value is. So even a weed, we don't know what its real value is. So, I, so I've seen so much destruction of, of, uh, of native plants that we decided to start a forest. So how did we do it? First of all, we took down, over the, over the first 10 years, we took down 40 hectares of eucalyptus, of cypress, and of wattle. Um, then, of course, we went around collecting seed. We started a, a tree nursery, and then we planted out. Now, if you look at this picture carefully, this was originally eucalyptus. And in this sweep, this is probably th two or three year old trees and completely well weeded. Look at it two years later. That is the invasive species coming back, the eucalyptus regrowth, prunus pudum, sestrum, also, um, solanum mauritianum. Uh, weeding, we spend 60% of our budget on controlling invasive species. Um, here we are again two years later, but the good thing about this photograph is you'll see indigenous trees already coming up two meters and uh, slowly 
it is becoming a forest. This, where, where there were cypress plantations, if you cut down a cypress, you have no regrowth at all. So we planted, uh, we planted grass, and then in 2001, and in 2003, this is a picture of the young forest, and that's what it looks like today. Um, wattle forest, uh, you, for every one indigenous species, we've, you probably have a thousand young wattles coming up. Uh, the only problem is on grassland is that we have dikers, and dikers eat a lot of uh, particular species, so you get a bias in the species which come up. That's uh, an example of a vangueria which has been eaten, uh, but it's growing from the, from the bottom. So we have very high biodiversity, uh, but what we don't have is old trees. But I uh, say to everybody, a forest is more than trees. We had to introduce orchids, we've introduced ferns. Um, some things have obviously come in naturally, lichens and fungi. And we have a lot of other species, uh, which we call trophic levels. This is a chameleon, greater galagos, uh, flagship species, colobus monkeys came in. They've been away f from the area for 80 years, and they came back in 2015 because they have the indigenous trees to eat. Uh, we have several species of bats, hornbills, sunbirds, hedgehogs. Um, the higher trophic levels, what we call apex predators in our area, civet cats, jenny cats, and we have lots of different species of insects about which we know absolutely nothing how it fits into the whole system. Um, this is a, a, a pioneer species which is heavily eaten and it took us years to find out what was eating it and we found out it was a little beetle or it was a larval stage of this chrysomelid. So there we go. We do not say that we, are, we have restored a forest but we are restoring a forest and how long does it take? We have 30 years for this project. We're in year 18 of a 30-year project, but it might take 100 years to be able to say, I have restored the forest. And my question is, can we say that will an art that this is, is effectively a man-created forest? It's an artificial forest. Will it ever become a natural forest? I don't have the answer to it, but we're trying. Um, thank you.